the gradient and directional derivative. Recall that if z equals to f of x and y is just a function in two variables, then we define the partial derivatives of this function f of x and f of y using the limit definition. The partial derivative of f with respect to x is the limit of f of a plus h. Instead of x, we use a plus h, and instead of y, we use b minus f of a and b over h as h goes to 0. With the same argument, we defined the partial derivative of f with respect to second variable y at point a and b, which is f of a, instead of x we use a, and instead of y we use b plus k minus z, which is f of a and b, divided by k, and we took the limit as k goes to 0. It represents the rate of change of the function z in the x direction and y direction. Basically, when we go back to elementary calculus, these are in the direction of unit vectors i and j. Remember the way that we defined i? i was the unit vector 1, 0, and 0, and j was the unit vector in the direction of y-axis. 0, 1, and 0. Now, in general, I expect you to ask what if we have a general direction? In that case, we can define the directional derivative of function f at point x sub 0, y sub 0 in the direction of a unit vector. So please note that we are using a unit vector. It means that the magnitude of this vector is equal to 1. It's defined as the directional derivative of function in the direction of vector u is f of x sub 0 plus h times a, comma y sub 0 plus h times b. So instead of your x, you're using x plus h of a. And instead of y, you're using y sub 0 plus h b minus z, which is f of x sub 0, y sub 0, divide everything by h, and then take the limit as h goes to 0. If this limit exists, we call this the directional derivative of function f in the direction of unit vector u. So this is the general definition, limit definition of the directional derivative. In this example, use the weather map in figure to estimate the value of the directional derivative rate of change of the temperature function at Reno in southeasterly direction. Okay, let's take a look at this map. This is Reno and this line passing through Reno toward Las Vegas. We have Los Angeles, we have San Francisco, but based on the information from the question, you're looking at southeasterly direction. The unit vector is u, which is equal to i minus j divided by square root of 2. Square root of 2 is just the magnitude. i minus j basically shows southeaster direction. And square root of 2 is the magnitude of this vector. Magnitude or norm. So when you're forming i minus j, i minus j is equal to 1, 0, minus 0 and 1, which is 1 minus 0 or 1, 0 minus negative 1, negative 1. So 1 and negative 1 represents the southeaster direction, but again, if you find a magnitude of 1 and negative 1, it is square root of 2. So since remember that we need to have a unit vector, we divide it by square root of 2. Now let us begin. We approximate the directional derivative of the temperature 
toward southeast by average rate of change. This is what we learned in elementary calculus. We are not doing anything special. Between the points where the line intersects, the isothermals T equals to 50, this point here, and T equals to 60. Again, pay attention to the direction. South is the direction of the temperature. So in that case, the difference between Y values, 60 minus 50, divided by the difference between X values, which is about 75 miles. We can look at the scale down here as well. And it's approximately 10 divided by 75 or about 0.13 degrees Fahrenheit per mile. That's how the weather is changing. The temperature is changing in that direction. So this is the basic use of directional derivative. You have a new direction. It's not toward the east or west or north or south. It is toward southeast so we have a new direction and we're using our new knowledge to find the rate of change this is just the rate of change okay we have the definition of directional derivative and we have a nice theorem the theorem says if f is a differentiable function then f indeed has a directional derivative in the direction of any unit vector, and we can define it this way. The directional derivative of f in the direction of u is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x times a, a is the first coordinate of the unit vector plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times the second coordinate of the unit vector b. So from the limit definition, we can define the directional def derivative using the partial derivative that we learned before. Let's take a look at one example here. Find the directional derivative of the following function. And suppose the unit vector u is given by the angle pi over 6. The directional derivative of the function in the direction of u is equal to partial derivative of f with respect to x times a, which is going to be your cosine of pi over 6. So remember that for the vector u from elementary calculus, if you have a and b and you have the angle for that vector, you can just represent it by cosine of theta comma sine of theta plus partial derivative of f with respect to y times sine of pi over 6. Now, the partial derivative of f with respect to x is 3x squared minus 3y. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 divided by 2. Partial derivative of f with respect to y is negative 3x plus 8y. And remember that when you're taking the partial derivative with respect to y, x acts like a constant times sine of pi over 6, which is a half. This can be written as a half, 3 times, we just distribute square root into parentheses to make it a little bit nicer, so we can combine these together. Plus, here you have negative 3x plus 8y. But the question says, hey, what if your x is 1 and your y is 2? If you do the substitution, the directional derivative at this point is 13 minus 3 square root of 3 divided by 2. So this is the rate of change of the function in the direction of this vector, which is basically equals to square root of 3 divided by 2 and a half. And this is the rate of change of this function.